Next on PIJN News, Dr. Chaps reports on these important issues. A facial recognition company has identified those extremists who stormed the Capitol last Wednesday. Were they Antifa? Rudy Giuliani has a video of, yes, showing they were Antifa. We have an inter interview with White House correspondent, Dr. Anthony Harper. Former Navy Chaplain Gordon James Klingenschmidt took a stand to defend religious freedom by daring to pray publicly in Jesus' name. Now he helps you by reporting the news, discerning the spirits, and praying the scriptures. Would you pray with us? Here's Dr. Chaps. God bless you in Jesus' name. My name is Chaplain Gordon James Klingenschmidt, Dr. Chaps, and you're watching PIJN News. On this show, we like to do three things. We report the news, we discern the spirits, and we pray the scriptures in Jesus' name. Are you ready to pray the news with us? Here's our first story. The Washington Times has issued two versions of this story, the latest showing that XR Vision is a facial recognition software company that has literally identified who the faces are in the extremist rally that took the Capitol last Wednesday. The company said in the statement of the Washington Times the following quote, shortly after the rioting started, XR Vision for, performed an analysis on the footage of, and identified several individuals. This information was shared with law enforcement agencies, end quote. There has been controversy about whether the rioters were pro-Trump or pro-Antifa. The New York Post has a quote uh, also cited by the Washington Times saying the following quote, the professional protesters were in the crowd posing as Trumpers. This is the Antifa people. They were preaching violence as they approached. It was announced that Vice President Mike Pence had said he had no constitutional authority, so the crowd got mad. The agitators used this to whip up anger. If the feds are intent on making a case between the instigators and Antifa, the evidence is there. U.S. Congressman Paul Gosar wrote the following on Twitter. He says, quote, this has all the hallmarks of Antifa provocation. Let's now roll a video by Rudy Giuliani, President Trump's private lawyer and former mayor of New York, who has the video showing, yes, it was Antifa. But now to try to prove what we're saying, I want to, I want to take you through a, a, a short tape. And what it's gonna show you is, it's gonna show you a, a, a guy who's identified as an Antifa guy. He has mostly Antifa type black stuff on. He does have a, uh, he does have like a, a ski hat on, which he's flipped around on the back. He has Trump in white letters. It is not an official Trump anything. Easily could have been painted on or for that purpose. But he's attempting to break a window. Uh, can't tell if he has just a hammer or one of those specialized uh, uh, instruments for breaking a window. And it looks like he's being lifted up because they're trying to break the top window. Probably he's gonna come in the top and open the door. That's the plan. So you see him lifted up and you see him hit the window. I think you may see him do it a second time. And then all of a sudden out of nowhere comes a big guy with a red hat on, a MAGA hat on, and he takes him to the ground and he restrains him. And you hear the Trump people yelling Antifa, 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 Antifa. And you hear them yelling that he should stop. And then later on, after uh, the hero that, that stopped it leaves, he tries again and several women, Trump supporting women, stop him. So, so like, right from the very start, what we see is at least this group of Trump people didn't want to see the law broken. And the Antifa guy or and several of his colleagues were the ones trying to break in. So let's take a look at that tape so you can see it for yourself. <laughs> Not by these police officers necessarily, but by the deep state. There we are in the middle of a of a militant leftist 
deep state globalist operation trying to make Trump supporters look like idiots and that we're violent agitators with truth and fact there are people dressed up in MAGA hats and other gear that are pretending to be MAGA supporters and they're instigating and they're preying on the emotions of all Trump supporters. Listen to this. Listen to this. These are people that love the cops. We love the police, but a few Antifa dressed up as Trump supporters. Our thanks to Rudy for that interview. I'm convinced, aren't you? Here's what the Bible says in Acts 19, and this is against all of you rioters, pro or anti-Trump, right? If you're a rioter, this scripture's for you. We are in danger of being called into question for today's uproar. There being no reason where we may give an account of this disorderly gathering. Or how about this one from 1 John 4? Beloved, don't believe every spirit, but test the spirits to see whether they're from God because many false prophets have gone out into the world. Let's take a short break. When we come back, Dr. Anthony Harper was at the rally in front of the Capitol. This is PIJN News, defending your religious freedom. Dr. Chaps will be right back. I'm Dr. Chaps. Jesus said in Matthew 24 that famine would be a sign of the end. And we are now facing a famine of biblical proportions in one of the poorest states in India, where our charity has sponsored up to 259 orphans and children for many years. But now, there are thousands of people starving in the streets because of the unemployment there. And we've been helping widows, like the letter we received from Sanuri, who writes to us and says, I stay with my three children in the slum. I was washing plates in the hotel and earning bread for my family, paying house rent. Suddenly I lost my income. After hotels were closed by the government, this was a shocking moment for me. Afterward, we could manage eating half a meal a day to manage a scanty ration for longer days. When there was no ration left for my family, I was quietly weeping outside with agony. An unknown fellow came and asked whether I am a widow. I said, yes. He wrote my name and address and asked me to collect ration from your office. I got that ration with joyful tears. I strongly believe that God helps the helpless during troubled times through benevolent people. You know, the benevolent people she's talking about are you and your generosity when you give through our ministry is actually helping her to see God. Would you please donate today at 866-Obey-God? Again, our phone number, 866-O-B-E-Y-G-O-D, and help us supply a matching gift. We've already given up to $10,000 to supply 100,000 meals, and there's somebody out there who could double that gift with one stroke of a pen. Please donate through our website, PrayInJesusName.org, and designate your gift to India Relief. Please give today. Stay tuned for the end of our show to learn how to partner with this ministry. Here's Dr. Chaps. Welcome back, I'm Dr. Chaps. We're gonna go right to Dr. Anthony Harper who had a report live from the rally in front of the Capitol. This is a big rally, Jericho March here in support of President Trump. There's so much at risk here at the Capitol building where Vice President Pence is in the hot seat to uh, decide and deal with the, the electors from the electoral college votes. A lot of challenging issues. Uh, in line with, with uh, Joe Biden talked about the soul of America being in jeopardy and he has no idea about what the soul of America is or spiritual matters. These are very serious issues. President Lincoln had a very good understanding about the soul of America. He said America is a nation that has forgotten God. We've become too proud and too arrogant and self-reliant. He called on a time of repentance, national repentance of our many sins that we've committed. That's also in light of 2 Chronicles 7:14, which says, if my people which are called by my name will humble themselves and pray and seek my face and turn from their wicked ways, then will I hear from heaven, forgive their sins and heal their land. And the only solution for America's problems is Jesus and repenting of our many national sins. We think of the children, the screams of the children being killed in abortion, and so much more, the assault on our religious freedoms, the, the way Israel is being treated, the sanctity of marriage as well. So much at risk. The soul of America is in jeopardy, as Joe Biden says, but he doesn't have any understanding of what that means. 
Jesus is the solution. And Biden and Harris need to themselves repent, as President Lincoln would call for as well. So much at risk here for America. This very crucial day, Wednesday, January 6, 2021. Pray for America to return to God as President Lincoln called for. Here now, live from the White House is Dr. Anthony Harper, who will explain what he saw at the pro-Trump rally, or was it an Antifa rally at the Capitol? Anthony Harper from the White House today. Anthony, uh, it's been four or five days now since the big Wednesday rally outside of the White House. Have you had a chance to collect your thoughts? Uh, yes, yes, of course. And there, there's a lot to uh, really digest in this matter. Um, uh, Rudy Giuliani in a video, uh, January 6th or the earlier January 7th, re referred to Antifa being involved with this and and YouTube took down that video, but uh, it's elsewhere and people should see that video. We have found that video. We're gonna show that uh, on this program. In fact, uh, I think we, we're doing this interview after we've already shown that video. Can you explain what you think Rudy Giuliani saw? Uh, well, Rudy Giuliani has some video footage of, <clears throat> of the protesters and breaking in about what happened. But uh, not only he, uh, he, but Sarah Palin also brought up the issue of Antifa co-opting this event and actually uh, orchestrating and arranging this event. It was a premeditated event to uh, make uh, President Trump's supporters look really bad. and. Uh, so I was there at that event, uh, Gordon, and uh, watched the, the protesters storm uh, the building. And it seemed like as if the police were actually inviting them up there. So you were there live on scene. This is the unvarnished truth. What did you see with your own eyes? Were the police involved in welcoming the protesters? They, they seemed to be welcoming the, the protesters up the steps. <clears throat> Okay, and what do you what do you take from that? Does that mean the protesters were not allowed to go up the steps? Uh, initially, there was a hold off, but it, it, it seems a little bit later there was a, there was a change in mood about, about the police and, and the protesters were welcomed up. And uh, um, the, the, the Capitol Police were not, not prepared for this. Uh, of course, they were warned. Uh, there were many people that had brought up the issue about. Uh, you know, there, this could be, uh, there could be a violent uh, breakout. There was concerns, but they weren't, they weren't seriously prepared for this. And uh, so I think that uh, uh, therein lies a lot of responsibility of uh, some, some Democrats and uh, that actually love this whole scenario about uh, President Trump supporters being uh, so-called wicked people. Well, I wanna be clear that on our program, we condemn violence against police, we support the police, and yet there yeah. were some people in the crowd that were violent. Do you think they were Trump supporters or were they disguised as Trump supporters? Uh, you know, Rudy Giuliani brought up this issue as well, Sarah Palin, that, and I, and I saw that, uh, that you know, there, there were obviously uh, uh, many uh, Trump supporters there, but I, my belief is with Rudy Giuliani that these were Antifa people dressed up as uh, Trump supporters wearing MAGA hats and so forth. But it wouldn't be just only Antifa, but there are other uh, violent people as well that uh, possibly that Antifa helped organize for this event. Okay, so there were some Antifa there who were wearing backwards hats that say Trump on them or self-designed hats. We've already shown the video of some of them doing damage to the Capitol. Do you think those were the same people that were violent against the police? Uh, very likely, uh, just still waiting uh, actually for some more evidence uh, to come out. And Rudy, Rudy Giuliani to issue another video and an update on that. Uh, uh, very serious issues and a very alarming. I really knew that there would be something going wrong uh, at this event, but uh, I, I don't know if the, if the Capitol Police would have taken uh, you know the warning seriously and been prepared for it. So Anthony, uh, five people reportedly died at the rally. One was a pro-Trump Air Force veteran who was shot 
improperly, I believe, it, that the, the shooter, the, the Capitol Hill authority is now under federal investigation for improper use of force for shooting an Air Force veteran, Ashley Babbitt, who died on the scene. Also a, uh, um, a Capitol Hill policeman, uh, officer, uh, I'm gonna say his name wrong here, Nick Pitch or, or something like that. Uh, he, he passed away of, of injuries reportedly because he was attacked. Nobody has seen the attack. We, we're still investigating to see what that was, but he died. And then three people died of medical emergencies. One person had a stroke, one person had a heart attack and, and another person. So did you see any violence firsthand? I didn't see any violence firsthand. I did uh, witness uh, one of the protesters that had been uh, had pepper spray uh, that he'd been exposed to and he was in it. In a, in a very intense pain and uh, trying to get uh, get that uh, pepper spray out of his eyes and get it um, get some relief. It, it very it was very painful for him and uh, he was very angry about that. And I can understand and understand why there were uh, many Christians that I had met at this event and that were praying. Uh, and uh, you know earlier that uh, Rudy Giuliani had mentioned that this was very peaceful protest at the ellipse uh, before the march over to the U.S. Capitol. Okay, let's take a short break. When we come back, Dr. Anthony Harper will explain what happened earlier that day. Dr. Chaps will be right back with more PIJN News. Are you frustrated by recent events in American politics? Do you wish you had the power to change things? Well, now you do. Don't say I'm only one person, I can't make a difference because we can teach one person with a little bit of political knowledge how to take back their country and make a real difference. When you get the book, How to Liberate the World, a step-by-step -step guide to take back your country. I wrote this book on personal experience having helped change bad laws or policies in, 30, in 13 states and won my own office in my own election for a legislature. I teach you how to use these political tools the same way that the left has been using for years. We now offer to Christians to use the right way to expand God's kingdom. There's a prayer after every chapter. And in the book, How to Liberate the World, we teach you how to write a petition and get a thousand people to sign your petition. How to organize a rally and get a thousand people to march with you. How to write a press release and get your story in the newspapers how to do fundraising for your cause or your organization. That chapter alone is worth the price of the book. And finally, how to run for office and win. These things are all in How to Liberate the World. And just to prove to you they really work, we're gonna throw in this DVD activist Christian set. Uh, it's, this is a $30 value. We're giving it to you half for half price. $15 for this, $15 for this. Normally, the two together would be $45. We're gonna give it to you for $30 suggested donation when you call us today at 866-Obey-God. Again, that's 866-O-B-E-Y-G-O-D. Or visit the website, PrayInJesusName.org. Click on the online bookstore, but for free shipping, you gotta call us now, 866-Obey-God. You can take back your country. We will give you the tools so you're not frustrated anymore. You will have power through prayer, through the Holy Ghost, through God to take back your country. Call today. Empowering you, the grassroots activist. Here is Dr. Chaps. Welcome back, I'm Dr. Chaps, joined by Dr. Anthony Harper, our White House correspondent, live from outside the White House near the ellipse. Anthony, I wanna ask, um, earlier that day, before, the day ended poorly, let's just say, uh, and, and ultimately, President Trump himself lost five U.S. senators. He started the day with 12 votes, he ended the day with seven votes to investigate, for example, the electoral college process in Pennsylvania. Only seven U.S. senators sided with Trump, so it was a, a bad day politically for the president. But how did the day begin? Some people say there were uh, up to a million people peacefully gathered outside on the Washington Mall. Oh yes, uh, I didn't sense any uh, violent issues and Rudy Giuliani had mentioned that there was no violent uh, issues presented at the ellipse, uh, which is surrounding the, the Washington Monument, uh, a very peaceful uh, event. And I interviewed some, uh, some of the participants at that event that's on our YouTube channel. But uh, it was a, a really great sense uh, 
a very peaceful rally there at the Ellipse, you know, prior to the U.S. Capitol event. So, um, you know, we're, we're really facing some serious issues. And I really want to make it clear about the, the difference between Biden and Harris and, and Trump and Pence on, on, on key matters uh, of life, you know, regarding uh, protecting children as well as our religious liberties and uh, defending Israel. There sure is a stark contrast, uh, Dr. Chaps, uh, between the two on those matters. Well, you mentioned Vice President Mike Pence and he had, let's say, a difficult decision to make because constitutionally, the vice president is the person who opens the electoral college ballot box and counts the votes. You know, so many from Pennsylvania, so many from Arizona. And he had been asked, uh, his own sources leaked to the press, that he had been asked by President Trump to send some of those electoral votes back to the states for further analysis. Instead, he counted them and basically shouted down the protesters saying, you lost the election, uh, we're here to, to have an orderly transition of power. Do you think Mike Pence uh, regrets that decision or, or should he have stood with President Trump a little longer? So uh, I and many others that I've been talking with uh, at these events uh, believe that uh, that Vice President Pence uh, failed President Trump that day, and President Trump was very upset uh, at Vice President Pence uh, not uh, upholding, uh, I would guess from his perspective, the Constitution. You know, this is a this is very clearly for me and a lot of people that I know a uh, it's it sounds like a strong word, but a communist takeover uh, statement in, in that. You know, President Trump had previously said this will never be a socialist country. And he also referred to the C word, and that I think is making very clear that he's referring to the communist word. And this is really an assault on our religious freedoms. Uh, you know, the Democrat governors and mayors didn't, didn't condemn the actions of uh, Antifa and other protesters, uh, but they sure did pr protest uh, what happened at the U.S. Capitol in a big way. So the protesters may have been communists who, who initiated the violence. I suspect, however, there were Trump supporters and, and maybe hundreds of them. You saw them entering the Capitol grounds. Maybe they were welcomed by the police. But so far as any of the Trump supporters became violent, they were following the bad example of the Antifa protesters. And we also condemn that. I think anybody, whether you're for or against Trump, who is engaged in violence against a policeman, in this case, should be charged. Even President Trump himself said, after the rally, President Trump said, we condemn the violence, we want all of the violent people arrested, no matter which side they're on, and they will be prosecuted to the full extent of the law. Do you agree? Oh, yes, we, 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 uh, we condemn violence. Uh... Uh, of this kind, it was uh, uncalled for. And whether whether Antifa was uh, totally involved with all these people that were entering the U.S. Capitol, that they were Antifa or other uh, terrorists, uh, domestic, or uh, somehow that President Trump's uh, uh, pro, uh, pro, um, supporters got caught up in the, uh, the, the Antifa people. And uh, it, it was very alarming to see this large group of people uh, you know, assault the U.S. Capitol, all this crowd of people move up the steps. And um, yeah, we have a lot to pray about for our nation that is in serious in trouble. And uh, I, I'm really concerned, I think, with a lot of evangelical Christians as well as Orthodox Jews about the safety of Israel, security of Israel, the, about children and their lives being protected and our religious freedoms. And so um, I, I'm, I'm really concerned about uh, you know, this uh, Abraham Peace Accord and what's going to be happening with that. Uh, unlikely that Biden and Harris would uh, continue to support that. And, you know, from the very beginning, you know, Biden and Harris may be viewed as anti-Semitic. Well, we can be sure they're going to side with Iran and not with Israel. Uh, we're very concerned, as you are, that uh, they will soften the president's support of Israel, and that's going to ultimately result in, in some kind of hostile exchange in the Middle East. Anthony, we're out of time, but please mention your website and, and uh, then I would I would like to offer a prayer for you. Well, you know, thank you. Uh, check out our website, imcnews.org, Intermountain Christian News, we have a YouTube channel and pray for me uh, for these open doors of favor to meet with President Trump 
to, to uh, meet with Kaylee McEnany again and so many uh, others here that, that I need to meet with concerning our, uh, our serious concerns about what's at stake for America. Amen, let us pray. Father, we ask you and your, your blessing on President Trump, on Vice President Pence, on uh, Anthony Harper as he gives these important reports from the White House. God, give him access, give him uh, favor, Lord, just open doors of anointing so that he can continue to bring these important pro-Israel and, and pro-Jesus reports from the White House. We pray your blessing on him and the transition of power in Jesus' name, amen. Let's take a short break and I'll have a word to conclude the show. How can you discern the thoughts in your own mind from the thoughts that come to you from the Holy Spirit? or from angels, or from invisible demons. I'm Dr. Chaps, and you've seen us on this show talk about the gift of discerning of spirits. How can you discern the thoughts that come to you? How do you know to learn to hear the voice of God and discern that from the demonic voice which tempts us to sin? Well, this is an important skill, and it will change your ministry. It'll change your life which is why we've created a 17 part video Bible study on a four disc DVD set that we would like to send to you and your church and your family and your small group. This important Bible study series goes through Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. How did Jesus discern the spirits? How did the apostle Paul discern the spirits? What does the Old Testament say about demons and the Holy Spirit and angels. We're offering a discount today while supplies last. It used to be $99. Now it's just a suggested donation of $50. You get the entire four disc set and you learn how to discern the Holy Spirit, angels and demons, every mention in the Bible. Call us at 866-Obey-God. Again, that's 866-O-B-E-Y-G-O-D or visit our website or write to the address on your screen. You can learn to discern the spirits. Empowering you, the grassroots activist. Here is Dr. Chaps. I wanna thank those of you who write to us. Here's a nice letter we received from one of our viewers who wrote to us and said, quote, I pray for the welfare of our country. Sometimes God moves in mysterious ways. I trust he has his reasons for saving us his way. God bless you and God bless America. We agree with you, AA from Hawaii, one of our faithful donors and we're asking you to write to us at P.O. Box 77077, Colorado Springs, Colorado 80970. When you write, would you please donate? The Bible says in 2 Corinthians 9, he who sows sparingly will also reap sparingly. He who sows bountifully will also reap bountifully. So let everyone give as he is purposed in his heart, not grudgingly or necessity, for God loves a cheerful giver. Please donate when you visit PrayInJesusName.org or call us if you need prayer at 866-Obey-God. We'll see you next time. Dr. Chaps needs your financial support to stay on the air. Would you please send your best financial donation today? Please visit PrayInJesusName.org to donate online. Or you can mail a check to Pray In Jesus Name Ministries, Post Office Box 77077, Colorado Springs, Colorado 80970. You can also call us toll free right now, 866-Obey-God. That's 866-O-B-E-Y-G-O-D. Please sign up for our free emails at PrayInJesusName.org. Again, that's PrayInJesusName.org.